India, among the world's most populous nations, is home to more than a billion people. It also has a unique ecosystem with exotic animals like tigers, elephants, gibbons, and perhaps something else. Some believe a creature that is half man and half beast also lives here. A cursed monster they call the monkey man. Some are saying that it looks like a monkey. Others were saying it looked like a bear. It walks on two feet. It didn't have any marks or anything. It was just hairy and black. And it made this sound. Oy! Eyewitnesses describe a beast up to eight feet tall, yet nimble enough to leap great distances. The creature has black hair and is said to walk upright. It is believed to have a flat, gorilla-like face and to make strange calls. The creature has been spoken of for decades, but in 2001, Delhi, the capital of India, was the scene of a rash of violent attacks. The first sightings were reported in the crowded slums of Ghaziabad, east of the city. But reports of the creature quickly spread. People were talking about seeing a monkey man, but I didn't believe the stories. Ghaziabad resident Noor Jahan was one of the many victims attacked by the creature. It was 11 a.m. in the morning and I went upstairs and there was something going on in the street. And all of a sudden I looked around and there was something there and I got really scared. Jahan describes a terrifying ape man attacking her. I was very scared. I tried to run away from him and he kept chasing me. And he pulled me back and tried to attack me. He kept hitting me again and again. He kept coming at me and I kept trying to hit it. It just kept happening. I was unconscious and the men in my family took me to the hospital. I kept taking medicine for my head injuries for six months and I was scared. Fear paralyzed Delhi and as stories of the monkey man spread, so did the panic. The first call that we got was on the 10th of May 2001 at about 10.51 p.m. Suresh Roy was a police commissioner at the time of the attacks. He was given the assignment of leading a special task force to capture the creature. We had sleepless nights. Number of days, we couldn't sleep. 12 o'clock night, the call will come. Victims claim they were beaten and clawed by a powerful assailant with monkey-like features. It attacked alarmingly quickly, then fled over the rooftops. With the temperature rising, residents began to sleep outside, and the frequency of attacks increased. In the span of uh, 10 days, we got 379 calls. So whenever the calls came, we reached to the spot. The heat wave resulted in power outages, plunging the streets into darkness and compounding the panic. Three people died fleeing the creature, and dozens were hospitalized. One guy who was told that some monkey man has come, he was sleeping on the uh, third or fourth floor, floor of his house, he jumped. Two of them jumped and one of them died. The police took to the streets. We had about uh, 3,000 police officers involved. We had collected people from local police. We had collected people from other paramilitary organizations. Because the area to be scanned and uh, calmed were quite big. So therefore, a lot of people had to be posted in various areas affected. We fixed video cameras, and, uh, night vision devices at various places, and we also had the sniffer dogs, you know, for the Delhi police. Some neighborhoods organized their own nightly patrols to frighten away the monster. But the sightings only increased. So number of days this kind of operation continued, and we could not lay our hands on any kind of creature of this nature coming as monkey man. The Delhi police consulted forensic experts who tried to find a rational explanation. Initially, it started with a few isolated incidents. Then suddenly, the number of the cases has increased exponentially. Dr. S.K. Verma, a professor of forensic medicine, was consulted as part of the investigation. 
He says that media hype was to blame. This case was a unique case, a single episode involving so many people, creating so much of uh, media attention. Um, it was really amazing. The police compared the injuries of past animal attacks with the wounds of the victims of the Delhi Monkey Man. Their analysis did not point to any known animal. The uh, pattern of the injuries by a monkey will have a characteristic bite pattern involving the various number of teeth. But since that was absent in these cases, uh, we concluded that it is not because of a monkey or some animal, rather these are of a different nature. The Monster Quest expedition team has traveled to the Indian subcontinent to investigate the scene of the most notorious attacks in Delhi. They will also trek deep into the jungle of Nokrek Biosphere, an Indian wildlife reserve to explore the most recent sightings. We know that great apes today exist in Africa, and they also exist in the islands of Indonesia, Borneo, and Sumatra. Esteban Sarmiento, a world-renowned primatologist, will lead the search. The first step in his process will be to determine if a known primate exists in this area. We know that prehistorically, they have found fossil great apes across Asia, India, all the way to China, and it's likely that some of these apes may still live. After studying great apes for 20 years, Sarmiento is able to identify primates from footprints, hair, and other sign. Before he can say if the monkey man is a new species, he must discount possible misidentification. Humans with long hair could be conceivably uh, identified as being a monkey man. Sarmiento starts his investigation in Delhi, interviewing Noor Jahan, the woman left unconscious after she was attacked. Can you tell me what its face looked like? Did it have a dry nose like ours or a wet nose like a dog's? It was black all over. The eyes were placed like ours, but they were dark. It looked like a regular monkey's face. I have no idea about the nose. Was he making any sounds while he was fighting you? When the monkey walked towards me, he made a woo type of sound. Otherwise, there was no sound. And when it stood, how tall was it? This tall or that tall? About five feet tall. Sarmiento also specializes in functional anatomy. He can determine if the behavior of the creature people describe is consistent with the anatomy of a known primate. Gorillas aren't such good jumpers, but a chimpanzee you know, an animal that's weighing 180 or 200 pounds could jump one or one and a half stories down and, and run away without a problem. So tell me what happened in 2001 when you were attacked. Around 2 or 3 in the morning, there were noises outside. I went downstairs. When I was on the stairs, he came out and grabbed me. When he attacked me, I had heard people say he rips stomachs apart with his claws. That's when I grabbed his hands. Then he ran and jumped onto the street. But when I looked where, I couldn't see. And he didn't even make a sound. Can you describe in the most specific detail you can what the creature looked like? He wasn't a monkey. He was like a man. On his face, I could only see his glowing eyes. The rest of his face was all covered in hair. Did you see how tall he was? Was he this tall or that tall? Did he have a tail? It didn't have a tail. It was walking on two legs like a human, and it reached to about my shoulder in height. Through more detailed questioning, Sarmiento continues his hunt for clues and finds a witness with scars from his attack. The creature jumped on my chest and he bit my neck. He was very big. And then I fought with him and threw him off me. Then he clawed me or bit me. I can't really say. It was a deep wound. Then he scratched and bit me here. 
and I had to get four or five stitches. Sarmiento examines the scar to compare it to other primate attacks he has seen. I've been attacked by great apes and also an occasional monkey here and there. And it was really difficult to, to say that the scars really belonged to monkey teeth. The only conclusion that Sarmiento can draw from the interviews is that the attacks left the victims terrified. There is one clue that he'll need to pursue further, the rash of sightings in Northeast India. I was scared for my baby because I saw blood dripping from the mouth of the creature. Monster Quest has traveled to India, searching for a ferocious monster that has been terrorizing the region for centuries. The infamous Monkey Man. The accounts of terrifying hairy ape men stretch back as far as 77 BC, when the Roman historian Pliny the Elder wrote of a monkey-like tribe called the Cromande. Pliny described the Cromande as a forest tribe that has no speech, but a horrible scream, hairy bodies, keen gray eyes, and the teeth of a dog. The accounts continued throughout the centuries. While India was part of the British Empire, British settler Henry Piddington wrote of an unknown forest race of mysterious monkey men. While returning from work on Piddington's plantation in Jharkhand, India, a group of local day laborers stumbled upon two bizarre creatures. The monkey people, as they were known to locals, appeared almost dead from starvation. The group captured the beasts and delivered them to Piddington, who knew much about primates. He studied the creatures and recorded his description. He was short, flat-nosed, had pouts-like wrinkles in semi-circles round the corners of his mouth and cheeks. His arms were disproportionately long and there was a portion of reddish hair to be seen on the rusty black skin. Piddington made arrangements to send the pair to Calcutta for further study. But late one night, they escaped without a trace. The sightings of the beasts have persisted into modern times, with the most recent accounts reported in the Garo Hills, 800 miles from Delhi, in the remote Indian state of Meghalaya. This mountainous region is hemmed in by the plains of Bangladesh, the Myanmar jungles to the east, and the Himalayas of Nepal to the north. Northeast India is part of the Indo-Burma biodiversity hotspot. Anurban Roy is a wildlife biologist who is an expert on the animals of the region. You have the tigers, you have the leopards, you have the wild dogs, the, the major predators. You have uh, the clouded leopard, which is an arboreal uh, smaller leopard. You have a huge amount of uh, herbivores here, and the, the biggest one of which is the, the elephant, the gaur, uh, it's an Indian bison. There's the mountain goats, the serao. You have an enormous variety of reptiles, which, which some of which have been documented. The region contains one of the thickest surviving forests on the planet. It also boasts one of the deepest and longest cave systems in Asia. The center of the area is Nokrek Biosphere, a 300 square mile wilderness preserve made up of largely unexplored jungle, teeming with wildlife. The Garo Hills is probably the best uh, forest areas in uh, Meghalaya. It also helps that the Garo Hills has uh, two of the largest protected areas in Meghalaya, but it also has a lot of community forests which are protected by the people themselves. So some of it in the form of sacred groves where uh, small patches of forests are protected uh, for, a, for a deity. Uh, maybe it dates back to the animistic times. Basically that patch of forest is completely left alone and nobody is allowed to take out any material from that forest. Esteban Sarmiento has arrived to begin the second phase of the expedition. 
I'm really anxious to see what you've got. Have a seat. Have a seat. Sarmiento meets with local researcher Deepu Mara, who has studied the reports of the Monkey Man for over a decade. A number of eyewitnesses living in the Garrow Hills have reported encounters with the creature. Marak and his team went to each location to gather and photograph any evidence. To start with, these are the photographs that I have collected. These are from different locations in Garrow Hills. And there was around 13 to 15 footprints, some are on the sandy beaches. Sarmiento is eager to examine Marak's evidence. It seems to be a rather wide foot. Yes. I can't really see the depth here. Was it different depth in the middle than in yes. than the heel? Uh, uh, yes, it is deeper in the toe, in the front side, and in the heel. This uh, footprint measures 14 and a half inch exactly, and and around uh, six and a half. So it's a seven. rather wide foot, much in, wider yeah, than a, than much, a human much foot. Wider, yes. And this seems to be some branches. Yeah, these the are the broken branches from the same location. This is not an elephant area. Sarmiento analyzes branches that have reportedly been broken by the creature. The only known large primate in the area that could be responsible is the gibbon. And it's too big for, say, a gibbon to have broken yes, a branch. Yes, yes. This is, this is clearly something that's broken and twisted. Yes, yeah. It's twisted in a bare one. It is twisted, twisted yes. With, his, with a claw, basically. So this is basically during dry season. Yes, very much. What else you have to show me? This is the nest uh, where the suspected Mandeburum uh, have been living for three days. The locals call the beast Mande Barung, or the forest man. This is in, in a forest floor because I'm just yes. seeing the floor. Yeah. This is a dried grass dried from the floor. nearby the jungle. That's been pulled together. Yes. Sarmiento meets up with Marek's crew. They will travel with him to the sighting locations and assist in interviewing the witnesses. Let's go make the plans. Okay. We have a lot to accomplish and we don't really have a lot of time, uh, so we have to get pretty well organized. I want to meet the person that actually sighted the Monday board. And let's see, wh where is it that we have to go to, to meet them? And we can talk to the eyewitness, the lady, who saw the creature. Uh, she is in uh, Rongri village. How far is the drive going to be? Uh, from Tura first, we have to drive to Bakmara, and from Bakmara to Rongsu. Then from Rongsu, we have to hike to uh, Rongri village. So the drive will be around uh, five hours, yeah. and from Siju, the trekking will be around four hours. That's just one way, four hours. One way, yes. Another four hours back, Coming so back, yes. we'll probably have to sleep there overnight. Yes. Sarmiento plans to place two cameras, one video, one still, in the jungles near where the monkey man was spotted. Let's get going. Okay, then. let's get started. All right. okay. The team begins the journey to Nokrek Biosphere, home to some of the most unique and rare animals in India. It is here, near a cluster of sightings, that they will set up the camera traps. Sarmiento spots signs of large animals in the area. Looks like a latrine. Probably a cat. Put my glasses on. And look, it has some seeds and stuff, so chances are it's a civet. And these are hair. You see, they got hair on them. So if there's any bone in them now, and that big seed, huh? And cats always try to reuse the place where they go to the bathroom, so it doesn't smell up the whole area where the animals are hunting at. The fresh evidence of a wild jungle cat means the monkey man may have similar prey in the area. The team has climbed nearly 1,000 feet during the hike. Where is the one? It's the end of the trail. All right, why don't you guys go get the gear together, and I'm going to find a place to set the cameras at, all right? Okay. Sarmiento is looking for a defined animal trail on which to position his camera, since it would be a likely path for the monkey man. Okay, you're going to come and build the camera with me, and these guys are going to put the solar panel up on it for you, okay? Hey, get the gloves over there. The team has chosen the PIX controller cellular eye system because of its unique capability to remotely transmit images out of the jungle over cellular networks. Whoa! The camera is powered by a solar panel positioned in the trees. It can run indefinitely. When the motion sensor is triggered, 
the built-in cellular phone will transmit the image to the Monster Quest team over the internet. The same process as sending a photo by email. They point the antenna in the direction of the closest cell tower. According to the GPS, the cell tower is in that direction. Just a little bit back, just a tiny bit. Good, good. We got, we got an extra bar in there. Let's see if we can just tighten that position. There is a concern the signal isn't strong enough. But when they attempt to send a test image, it works. That looks good. All right, I got some uh, pheromone chips on, so we're going to put these up. Sarmiento finishes baiting the area with chips containing deer and primate scents, meant to lure in the monkey man. The rest of the team sets out to deploy a camera to capture video footage of the creature, and they notice a positive sign. There's a lot of animal tracks here. Since it's the dry season, the animals will come to drink water. This looks like a good spot. And that's a good view. I think we'll put the camera here. All right, we'll turn it on. They deploy a DVR eye camera, which can record more than two hours of high-quality video. It is able to record both daylight and night vision images, making it ideal for the jungle environment. For this camera, the team uses fruit as bait to entice the creature. I think we're done here. With luck, we might find something. Sarmiento meets a local farmer who recently saw the monkey man. While I was collecting banana leaves outside Mokrek, I saw the creature on a hill about 100 yards away. Sangma describes the beast as giant. I estimate it was 8 to 9 feet tall and looked like a man, but it was extremely muscular and covered in very thick black hair. For three days I saw it in the area, walking on two feet and occasionally laying down. The team recovers hairs believed to be from the creature. They are sent to the science team for further analysis. Upon my first examination of the hairs, I was really excited because this was a hair I hadn't seen before. Professor Marna Erickson at the University of Minnesota will attempt to identify the species of origin. Hair fiber morphology is an extremely valuable tool in identifying species. We'll be taking the hairs to the laser microscope and we'll uh, take three-dimensional image of the outside of the hair fiber. Essentially kind of a mini CAT scan that will allow us to do some species identification, at least to rule out some. But to get a positive ID, we'll have to do this in comparison to other hair samples from known animals. Erickson is excited by the prospect of discovering a species new to science. If this is a unique animal, unknown to science, we won't be able to make that positive ID. But that in and of itself is a terribly exciting opportunity for us. MonsterQuest is searching the remote jungles of India for evidence to unlock the mystery of the Curse of the Monkey Man. Esteban Sarmiento is leading the expedition team into a deep, remote region of the Garo Hills to interview another eyewitness. They finally arrive in Siju, the last village connected by road, after which they must continue on foot. The mountainous terrain will make the five-hour journey slow. With tigers and elephants in the area, hiking at night is prohibited so they must rush to complete the 20-mile round trip before dark. At noon, the team reaches the tiny village of Rangigitam, where Rosna Marek awaits. Marek only speaks Atong, an obscure Garo tribal language. 
Tell me what happened with this creature. The creature had very thick hair, so you couldn't see its skin and blood all over its head. Rosna Marek tells a terrifying story of a close encounter with the creature. I was alone at home, sleeping with my young baby. I heard noises and thought it was my husband coming home, so I started to light the fire. But the creature hit my hand away. Blood. The creature smelled like blood. I was scared for my baby because I saw blood dripping from the mouth of the creature. I couldn't see the face clearly because it was too dark. But the eyes were reflective and the face was really long. I just sat in my bed until the creature left and then I started crying. Sarmiento hopes to classify the creature using the evidence he's found and these interviews. He had nails like we do. He didn't have like long nails. He had nails like ours, but they were just a little longer. Were you able to see its ears or were they covered in hair? The ears? Hair was covering the ears, but I could still see a little bit of skin. Humans and apes have nails instead of claws and very little hair on their ears. Marek's answers do not quite rule out misidentification. Were his fingers like ours or were they longer? Did, did he have a thumb like we do? Or did it have a very small thumb or no thumb at all? The creature had fingers proportioned like we do and it had a thumb like ours. Humans have relatively large and long thumbs compared to the fingers. Could you see the white in the creature's eye? The eyes were reflecting light back at me, so I couldn't see them clearly. Reflective eyes are a characteristic of nocturnal animals adapted for night vision, but are rare in primates. Were its legs long like a man's legs and its arms like a man's arms, or were they short legs with long arms like a gibbon? The arms of these primates are proportionately longer than the arms of humans. It was proportioned exactly like a man. Sarmiento then asks the obvious question. Are you sure that what you saw was not a man with a lot of hair on his body? I'm absolutely sure that what I saw was not a man. Was, was the blood on the creature, on the hands and the face, was it on the body? I didn't notice blood on the creature's body, but it left handprints smeared on the wall and blood from its mouth dripped on the ground. The blood from the encounter remained intact on the bamboo walls of the hut. Sarmiento collects a sample for the science team to test the DNA material for species identification. The description doesn't rule out misidentification, but the evidence gathered might. On their way back to Siju, Sarmiento's guide pulls him aside. Look at the size of this cave. Wow, that's really amazing, huh? Yeah, this is one of the longest caves in Megalaya. Humans, as well as many primates, use cave entrances for shelter. It's known that chimps use caves because they're cooler and then it escapes the, the heat. Maybe the Mandibara does occasionally use the cave and maybe some of its remains can be found here. And given the size of the stream, this cave must have some pretty big openings. Not just a single one, but coming laterally from the sides. Yeah. The limestone helps preserve bone mm -hmm. and so any bones that fall here, they won't disintegrate. They'll get fossilized and get preserved. So, Rudy, has this place ever been mapped? Those people have been coming from all over the world you know, to explore these caves. But no, they has really been looking for fossils. You know, well, and the enormity of the cave is like, they haven't been able to map it fully. We right. don't know how deep or how long the stretch well, it's, it's, it's a good place to start looking. A lot of orangutan remains 
were found in caves, even though orangutans live mostly in trees. They think the animal comes maybe into a cubby hole like this, you know, when it doesn't feel well to die, because it's a place that gives them some safety. Something dies here, it falls down, and ends up there on the bottom floor. So this would be a, get a good idea of what animals were using their cave and what was living here, not that long ago, in some cases. The team quickly surveys the cave, but no remains are visible. Locals may have already searched here. Bones bring a good price at the local markets, where they are believed to have medicinal powers. Sarmiento is excited by what he's seen. Maybe the mandibarum comes in the caves, or it has come in the caves, and maybe some of its remains might be found here. I mean, the likelihood that one of these animals survives, you know, in a place as remote like this isn't that far-fetched. Monster Quest is searching India, one of the oldest civilizations on Earth, rich in history and legend, to find the monster behind the curse of the monkey man. Some locals believe the being is actually the Hindu monkey god, Hanuman. Hanuman is not a story or mythology, but it is a real thing. So many people in India say that they have seen the Hanuman. I have not seen yet. But I have listened to so many people in the villages, they have experienced this. Descriptions of Hanuman bears a striking resemblance to the monkey man. They describe just like a monkey face and monkey figure and this is an eight feet height and just like a human being. These descriptions of Hindu god Hanuman differ from the monkey man in one significant way. We worship monkey. Monkeys are the friends of the human being, not the destroyer of the human society. The expedition team is investigating whether or not the monkey man is more than a legend. They've already found hair and blood samples, possible evidence of a new species. Though no great apes are known to inhabit India, the northeast region has already proven to hold recently discovered primates. It was just new to science, but it wasn't unknown to people there. The Aruna Shal macaque, photographed in 2004, is the first macaque species discovered in more than a century. Because people always knew that it was different and it was, a, it was a separate from the other monkeys that you see there. I'm generally interested in anything new, uh, any animals that could be new. So not necessarily a cryptozoological animal, but sometimes what is taken as cryptozoology can end up as a new species. So, uh, of course, as a biologist, it's, it's everybody's dream to discover a new species. The expedition team is on their way back to their base camp in Tura after interviewing eyewitnesses. The road to Tura brings the team within 10 miles of the Bangladesh border. This is a dangerous place to be stranded, as help isn't close by. Near the end of their drive, Sarmiento stops in the town of Rangram to meet with Deepu Marak at a market known to sell bones, which are ground up and used as medicines. These markets are great for finding what animals exist in the area. Sarmiento is looking for bones of the monkey man, or what locals call the Monday Barong. So this is one of the bone seller. So you can see the different kinds of bones here. Well, that's a rib. Is that cat? Yeah, it's a little cat. cat. But it's not. It, it, it's not a house cat. It's a. Yeah, no, no cat. Me, 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 mingo. It's jungle. Jungle. It's a wild cat. It is a wild cat. It's a wild cat. Yeah. yeah. People have found animals that are new to science in markets many times and then they go back out yeah. and, and, and get an idea of where they could exist in the field and finally find the animal. Here a lot of these yeah. bones aren't that diagnostic. Yeah. This, is some, this is some kind of small deer or yeah, something yeah. like a monkey. Yeah, these are all from Garo Hills. These samples are all from Garo Hills. And these all have some kind of magical powers. Nothing resembling a monkey man specimen can be found, although the trip offers Sarmiento insight into the other animals living in the area. Marna Erickson has analyzed the hair sample obtained from Sarmiento. 
with this technology, we'll be looking at not only just the pattern, we'll be doing measurements on the dimensions of the individual scales. We'll be looking at repeat patterns, dimensions on the hair fiber itself, hair diameter, um, cuticle distribution, shape, and size. At this stage, we can't say whether or not we've discovered a new species, but we're very excited to continue the analysis. Erickson completes a three-dimensional scan of the hair from India. She can now begin the second stage of the analysis. The next step is to gather hair samples from animals known to be in the area. Monster Quest is searching for evidence of the curse of the monkey man in the remote wilderness of India. This woman came face to face with the beast and said it was covered in blood. This researcher and his team have collected evidence of the creature for more than a decade. This woman was hospitalized for three months after her fight with the creature. And this man led 3,000 police officers in an attempt to track down the monster. No trace of evidence to link monkey man or any other uh, uh, animal for that matter was found on the ground. Neither on the injuries sustained by the people nor by the spot inspection. We couldn't find it anywhere. It started on 10th and the whole thing got closed on the 30th of May. Span of 20 days. Monkey man was at the back of the mine but not on the ground. Forensic expert Dr. S.K. Verma was brought in by police to examine the injuries of the victims and concluded they were not made by any known animal. I interviewed 51 people and uh, majority of them were having a fear psychosis uh, in their mind. There is an overcrowding. People sleep in the open on the roof. And during night or even during day, there is a frequent power cuts. When we set out with the police investigators and the psychologist, all of came to a conclusion that this is nothing but it is a mass panic. When this report was published the next day in the newspaper that there is nothing like a monkey man or an animal responsible for these attacks, rather this is a mass hysteria. Suddenly, from that day onwards, no new case was reported. The Delhi monkey man has proved elusive, but the Monster Quest team hopes the hair and blood samples gathered by the expedition in the jungle of Meghalaya may provide some hard evidence. After observing that banding pattern, the coloration on those hair fibers, we're very interested in looking at the red panda. While this is not evidence of a monkey man, the discovery could still be significant to science. There are still maybe some surprises left and uh, one of them could be the red panda. The average red panda is actually not at all contiguous with this area. From whatever conversations that I have had with local people, they have insisted that uh, there was a red panda at some point of time but they haven't seen it uh, nowadays. The analysis of the blood sample from the monkey man is complete and the DNA is human. This could mean that the sample was contaminated or the eyewitness mistook a man for the creature. The expedition team checks on the DVR-I video system. The camera was intact, although a falling branch had knocked it on its side. They copy the memory card and return to Tura to see what it reveals. A squirrel, a bird, and then something strange. In the left-hand corner of the screen, barely visible, the rear quarters of an animal can be seen leaving the frame. Even with repeated viewings, the team is unable to determine what the animal is. Deep in the jungles of no crack biosphere, the team's cellular eye has also sprung to life and begun beaming back images. It is unclear what is triggering the system in the series of strange photos. But these images 
of a wary Himalayan civet cat proves there are animals in the area. The cellular eye camera will continue to photograph anything that moves in the area, transmitting the images out of the jungle for further analysis. The system will remain in the hills documenting the wildlife as long as the sun continues to charge the solar panel. This monster quest expedition has made some significant discoveries. The scars of witnesses in Delhi are not like those seen in attacks by known ape species. The hair collected by the monster quest expedition team was analyzed and resembles the red panda, meaning this rare animal may live in a region where it was never thought to exist. After reviewing the evidence, Esteban Sarmiento has arrived at his own conclusions about the Monkey Man sightings. The Delhi Monkey Man stories uh, seem to be based largely on superstition. Sarmiento poses a theory that may help further explain the hysteria surrounding Monkey Men in Delhi. He suggests a known species desperate for food. Basically, if you have food around the monkey, the monkey just wants to find a way to make you give the food up. So sometimes if it can, if it can intimidate you, they'll try to intimidate you. There is a growing population of rhesus monkeys in Delhi. And with an ever-increasing human population, confrontations are only likely to increase. While he believes the Delhi monkey man attacks may have been a case of mass hysteria, Sarmiento takes a different view of the sightings in northeastern India. We have some consistency uh, as to the reports. Now that there is that consistency gives a, a certain likelihood that it does exist. Maybe in the past an individual or creature like that actually did exist. In the last century we lost a lot of large mammals including primates. At the same time in the last century we discovered a number of large mammals so the Mandebara might either be extinct or it might be in, in numbers so low that we actually never were able to detect it. And there are reasons why no one has yet found definitive proof. Northeast India uh, in comparison to other parts of India has not really been explored that well uh, by uh, biologists or by researchers. Many of the states in Northeast India have uh, insurgent groups who are uh, uh, who are armed and who mostly patrol the forest. It doesn't really encourage researchers to go in there because it's dangerous. The roads and facilities are not so good here and uh, diseases uh, are quite common here. So basically it's very tough to work in the field here. In India, in our culture, we believe all the creatures in this universe are one or another form of the God. In this country, sir, we have a lot of, you know, superstitions. Today, mon monkey man, tomorrow, there could be anything else. Researchers and scientists need to go out a little bit more and work in these areas and uh, they'll come up with lots more. We will continue our search as long as uh, it takes to establish that the Mandeburung really exists in Garo Hills. There may be animals in, in, in the forest of Garo Hill in Assam that we know nothing about. And if we don't protect these areas, they will become extinct and we will never find anything out about them.